All right, today we're doing a comparison between these three vehicles, 2020 CRV, RAV4, and Forester. The CRV has some new things this year, a new 1.5 liter turbo, no more available non-turbo engines. This is now standard for 2020 and uh, going forward, revised exterior styling on the 2020 CRV. And there's a new hybrid model, which I happen to have in the driveway right now. These two vehicles were revised or redesigned last year, but so basically 2019s are 2020s in terms of what they look like and new features. Although the RAV4 has a new TRD off-road trim and newly available Android Auto. And here's an interesting statistic about the Forester. 97% of those that were sold in the last 10 years are still on the road today. This is a lot about uh, the reliability of a Subaru for sure. According to a grading system by US News and World Reports, this is how they have these vehicles broken down. They go by performance, interior, safety, reliability, critics reviews, and an overall rating by US News. So performance wise, uh, the CRV gets a 8.1 out of 10, 7.9 for the RAV4, 7.3 for the Forester and pretty close in the interior. They're all in the eight range, eight and a half. So this CRV has considered a better interior versus the other two. Safety wise, they're all pretty high. 98 for both the Forester and CRV. Reliability though, this is kind of, kind of sketchy when it goes to the Subaru. They're giving it a two out of five, 3.5 out of five for the CRV and three out of five for the RAV4. The critics are pretty big on the CRV giving it a 9.4 out of 10, 8.5 for the RAV, 8.8 .8 out of the Forester. And then um, US News says an overall rating, if you were to grade all three of these based on all this criteria, they're going to the CRV gets an 8.7 out of 10, and the Forester 7.8. Again, US News and World Report on this rating system here. All right, let's break down the pros and cons of these three. I'll begin with the price point because it kind of ties into some of the uh, pros and cons. Uh, for the CRV, between 25 and basically $35,000. The RAV4 between 26 and 36, and the Forester between 24.5 and 34,600. Now there are four trim levels available in the CRV six and the RAV4 and 4 and the Forester. Now, some of the pros with the CRV, comfortable ride, good fuel economy, in fact, good fuel economy across all three vehicles. Uh, handsome on the outside, roomy cabin, and good cargo. I'll get to the cargo numbers here soon. Uh, as far as the RAV4, again, miles per gallon, long list of standard features. Uh, comfortable as well, Forester, standard all-wheel drive, one of the big pros there, quiet, smooth ride, spacious seats. Uh, the cons, for the CRV, uh, the base has very few standard tech features. That might be a deal breaker for you, I'm not quite sure, that's why we're doing this. A frustrating infotainment system, something that they need to update here soon. I don't know, maybe it's getting long in the tooth. I think 2017 was the last time they did a, an upgrade on that one. Loud engine for the RAV4 and a higher base price starting up. So if you look at the RAV4, it's between $900 and $1,500 higher for the base model versus its competition. So just to get into a RAV4 is gonna cost you up to a grand more, basically, no matter what. And then uh, lackluster acceleration and a poor predicted reliability score for the Subaru. So those are the pros and cons of those three. All right, breaking down more facts and figures and numbers, engine, powertrain, that kind of thing, transmission. Uh, 1.5 liter inline four cylinder for the CRV, 190 horsepower, 179 pound feet of torque, CVT, front wheel drive, uh, standard with uh, all wheel drive is the option. RAV4, 2.5 liter, four cylinder, 203 horsepower, 184 pound feet of torque. So more powerful there in terms of horsepower, eight speed automatic transmission, front wheel drive standard, all wheel drive optional. As course with the Subaru, all wheel drive is standard across all of them because it has standard symmetrical all wheel drive. Uh, 2.5 liter, uh, four cylinder, 182 horses, 176 pound feet of torque, CVT. There's, there's the pros and cons of all these different things. I'm just kind of breaking them down by numbers. Are you more interested in horsepower? Um, the transmission, who knows, towing wise, the RAV4 beats them all with a maximum towing capacity of 3,500 versus the 1,500 on the other two. And ground clearance, this might be an interesting fact for you. I always find it interesting because I like to go off-road some of these vehicles. Uh, and since they all have all-wheel drive, sometimes that's what might be something you want to do. 8.2 inches on the CRV, between 8.4 and 8.6 on the RAV4, and 8.7 on the Subaru. So Subaru clearly a vehicle that touts its off-road capability and 8.7 inches of ground clearance can really help get that done. 
Another fun stat I like to look at is the dimensions. So wheelbase, length, width, and height, along with passenger volume and cargo volume. So now you can really start painting a picture in your mind before you even get to the vehicle on which one has what. So CRV, 104.7 inches, and compared to the other two, the RAV4 is only a little bit longer in terms of wheelbase. Uh, but then we look at all of them in terms of length, pretty close to the same. Uh, CRV and Forester are identical. RAV4 is a little bit smaller. Uh, width, CRV and RAV4 the same, whereas the Forester is a little bit narrow. And the height, all about the same between 66 and a half and 68. So a little bit taller on the Forester, just kind of the way it looks that way. Now passenger volume, here's some big differences. 102.9. Uh, 98.9 and uh, 107.8 uh, in terms of uh, cubic feet of volume for passengers. Now the cargo volume is the one that really has the biggest differences in uh, based on numbers. So 39.2 cubic feet of volume uh, behind the back row for the CRV, by far the largest. Uh, but when you're looking at overall cargo volume, when that seat is folded down, 76.1 in the Forester but they're losing, what, almost four cubic feet of volume in the back. So somehow they're making it up. It's all about how the dimensions are created. I mean, you know, longer vehicle by uh, just a couple inches there compared to the RAV4. Anyways, that right there shows you some interesting numbers. Which ones stand out to you? Obviously the cargo volume for the CRV, the overall passenger volume for the Forester, and also you have a lot more cargo volume for the Forester. So this might be the category you wanna to lean to if you're looking for more space on the inside. I'm gonna finish off with some fuel economy as well as the price point one more time as we do the final breakdown. Now, CRV, not hybrid, not hybrid at all. Now the uh, all-wheel drive, 27 city, 32 highway, and here's your potential range, 378 or 448 miles. In the front wheel drive, obviously it's gonna be better. A fuel economy, 28 city, 34 highway, almost 400 miles in the city, 476 range potential on the highway. RAV4, 23, oops, 27 city, 33 highway in that all wheel drive, almost 400 miles of range, so they're getting better range for some reason. Uh, and then 378 miles of range because you're getting 33 on the highway. In the front wheel drive, 26 city, 35 highway. Again, you can kind of see the numbers there and the Forester straight up at 26 city, 33 highway for those numbers. So you're getting pretty close in terms of overall range and fuel economy between all of the vehicles. So best case scenario, looking at probably the, the RAV4 in the front wheel drive. Uh, this is an interesting step that I like to showcase is the fuel tank capacity. They got a 14 gallon tank in the CRV, 14 and a half in the RAV4, a 16.6 gallon tank in the Subaru. Maybe Subarus are, they need a little more gas to go a little further when they're off-roading, who knows. Uh, price point, one more time, between 25 and 35 for the CRV, 26 to 36 in the RAV4, and then 24.5 to 34,600 in the Forester. So that's my what's the difference breakdown strictly on numbers, of course, some of the pros and cons and what's new this year between the 2020 CRV, RAV4, and Forester. Hope you found that helpful. Any other suggestions or stats you want me to add next time, let me know. I'll talk to you soon. Adios. So are you in the market for a new or used car? Check out my go-to website for the best deals based on zip code, also in the description below this video. Until next time, I'm Dave Erickson. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Adios.